Paul Lane, the uh, MHA for Mount Pearl South. Good morning, buddy. Good morning, Randy. How are you this morning? Good. You've jumped the queue. I don't know how I did that, but I managed to screw it up. Well, I uh, I appreciate that, and I apologize to Durham. Not Durham Flynn, is it? Uh, uh, no, no, I don't think so. If it was, I wouldn't apologize. Oh. <laughs> That's because you know him too well. <laughs> That's right. All right, well, we're going to run out of time. We, we don't have a lot of time, so let's. Yeah. Uh, what's up? Well, okay, first of all, Randy, uh, I just wanted to uh, uh, wish everybody a happy Valentine's, particularly my wife, Charmaine. She puts up with an awful lot, and unless you're in political life, you don't realize the sacrifice your families make, and uh, I love her dearly for it. But anyway, uh, Randy, um, I uh, just had the pleasure of uh, attending the uh, opening of the Youth Parliament down at the House of Assembly. Yeah. And uh, uh, they're certainly looking forward to a great couple of days. And it's great to see that, you know, that we do have uh, some great young people here in this province who are very engaged in the things that are going on and uh, and have a lot of great ideas and a lot of great things to offer. And I, I think it's a great testament to our youth, and I think our future certainly will be in good hands in the, in the future, you know? Well, you know, you got to... People have to be trained, and they have to learn. They have to know about our democracy, and they have to be able to participate in it. And Youth Parliament is one of the great, great examples of that. I wish we had more advanced kind of promotion of it and more kids involved in it. But, yeah, the ones that are there, yeah, they're they're budding politicians of the future. No doubt about Absolutely. that. Absolutely. I could see it for sure. Randy, uh, the other thing, and uh, I guess the main thing, I just wanted to make a quick comment. I know we're running short on time. But I just wanted to talk about uh, the, uh, the the deficit or the potential deficit situation and the pre-budget consultations. Yeah, it's looking bad. Yeah, well, you know, I, I heard you uh, uh, refer to, you know, we've fallen off a fiscal cliff, and certainly I've heard uh, members of the... Uh, of the official opposition and the third party now are trying to, you know, they're using this as political fodder and so on. But, you know, uh, the reality of it is what, what Minister Kennedy said uh, is that, uh, you know, if we don't get our spending under control, and that's the thing we need to realize, because I see on the VOCM news stories, it talks about a $4 billion deficit in three years. Mm. Uh, and, uh, you know, nobody's saying that the deficit is going to reach $4 billion in three years. What it's saying is that if we don't do anything about it, uh, that's what could happen. That's right. So, so, and I think that's an important distinction to make. So, before we start saying the sky is falling and everything is doom and gloom, we need to realize that. I mean, the bottom line is that over the last number of years, as we all know, uh, you know, we and Minister Kennedy said that you know we've made significant investments, whether it be in whether it be in roads and infrastructure, municipalities, and the list goes on. And all those things were very needed things because, of course, when we took over government, that you know that things were in in, in disarray. We had a huge uh, uh, infrastructure deficit, and uh, you know, uh, I certainly, as a member of government, support all of these expenditures. I'm sure, as you, as the mayor of the city of Mount Pearl, when we look at the investments, we just uh, we, we just put 6.1 million dollars in the multi-year capital uh, uh, in the city of Mount yeah, Pearl. I don't think that anybody new recreational facility that we need. We look at the. I don't think that anybody is going to argue yeah. that spending. Yep. Was absolutely required and necessary. I don't yep. think that that's where I don't think that that's where the charge that's being laid at the feet of government uh, right now, as it relates to this impending deficit, comes from. This is not about the amount of money that got laid in the capital. This is about operations, and this is about money that some people are going to argue got bled out of the system for the purposes of. Quite frankly, Muskrat Falls and other, I'll call it pet government kind of projects and things. And, and I got a feeling that the government is in for a couple of months of rough weather as a result of this. And the bigger challenge is now for the new Minister of Finance is, okay, yeah. if you're going to balance this, if you're going to put us on the road to balancing the budget, where are you going to do it? And... That's the bigger issue right now. Uh, well, it absolutely is, and that's uh, one pays? of the reasons, of course, why we... Yeah, who pays the, the price uh, here? I guess I guess we, we know right away our our civil service pays the price. Uh, the, the the wages and, and increases they enjoyed four years ago are not going to be there. Uh, Kathy Dunderdale, in the end, did not lie. She just said it too soon, that there would be several hundred layoffs into the thousands. We, we have to assume, based on what we're hearing now, that she wasn't lying at that point. She was just early. Yeah. <laughs>
Because that's know, common. That's no, common, no, isn't it? Right? No, that's you know, common. I, well, I mean, I'm not going to prejudge what's going to happen or what's not going to happen. I'm certainly not going to prejudge what's going to happen in negotiations. I mean, the reality of it is that we have great people working for us here in the province. They do great work. And But, you know, the reality, and, and when we can give, uh, we do give. And, yeah, but and this is not about, Papal, Papal, at the time. Papal, this is not about negotiations. I'm not talking about negotiations. This is about making budgets. This is like... Yes. This is it like, is about making budgets. All right. So if you're going to make a budget, yep, and you're going to get us out of this circumstance, yep, you're you're going to either you're going to stop doing something or a lot of things that we were doing. I mean, the room around the street is a 12 percent cut across the board in every government department. That's not sustainable. Can't do it. Well, uh, well, first, so, so, uh, well so, first of all, I'm not going to speak. First of all, I'm not going to speak to rumors. And, and well, of course not. Of course, that's, but, and that's but, one of the problems. Quite frankly, that's one of the issues that I see happening on a regular basis when it comes to all yeah, kinds of I issues. Am. Is that Paul? We've got to. But Paul, but Paul, we've yes. got to be able to discuss. It's not minister is going to sit down this very morning. Yep. In Carbonier. Yes, he is. And somebody hopefully is going to be saying the same things to him. I'm saying to you. Yep, absolutely. Right? absolutely. So it's one thing to look at us, and it's one thing to look at us on the outside and say where you're going to cut. Yep. I'm on the outside telling you where you are going to cut. Well, you are yeah. going to. This is what you're going to do because you've got no choice if you're going to get out of this mess. Now, the opposition may look at you and say it's your own fault we're in this mess. Fair enough. I did, let that argument be. But they you can can't deny. Clear, you yeah. can't deny at this point yep. that this is going to call. For some tough, tough belt tightening. And if that's not the case, then what the hell are we doing all this drama for? Well, the reality of it is, Randy, we all know, like our own household expenses, because really running a province, in a sense, is no different than running a household budget. I mean, identical. the bottom line is, is you have so much, you have so many expense, you have so much money coming in, you have revenue coming in, and then you have expenses going out, and those and those have the balance. Now, you can either you can either decrease your expenditures, you can increase your revenues, or you can borrow, or well, you can do a com or you can do a combination you're gonna of, do a com uh, you're of all three. You're going to do a combination because that's what everybody does because that's the smart thing to do, and you know one thing the New Democrats brought up this morning, which I found very interesting, uh, and it would be they, they actually do want the government to look at revenue earning possibilities, and that includes taxes. Well, that's like the bottom line is, uh, Randy. Like we, you know, we've certainly, uh, you know, when we can and when we yeah. could over the years, we've decreased taxes. But I mean, look, the bottom line is here is that uh, what the minister is saying is that the minister is coming out. He's being quite frank and honest with the people as to where we find ourselves. Quite frankly, because of the volatility. Uh, you know, I got to stop you again. I, I really want to get. Piece of that. I really want to get Durham on. So I, can can we? Yeah. You know, because using the term "where we find ourselves" is a little disingenuous, mm -hmm. right? Your own, your one of your own chief economists from Memorial University told you three years ago where you were going to where you were going to find yourselves. This is not a, you're not discovering this today. No, no. <laughs> anyway, no, no, twenty no, seconds, no, Paul. Let's wrap no, up. No, we have we haven't discovered it today, Randy. But what we're saying is that when we had the ability to make the investments that were needed, we made those. Now we're in a situation for the next couple of years where we're going to have leaner times and we're going to have to spend accordingly. I think that's just a responsible thing to do. Paul Lane, always a pleasure. Absolutely. And I guess we'll see you at the uh, Frosty Dinner Theater tonight. You will, buddy. Looking forward to it. All right. All right. Take care. Have a good one, buddy. All right. Bye-bye. Right, bye. By the way, he played Valentine Elvis last night at the Variety Show. He... You stay with politics and talking and debating because as a singer, you ain't making it, Paul. That's all I'm saying. And that's a good debate. And those are the points I think that have to be that are going to be argued and debated about. And the reality of it is, is that what the minister has told us here, rightfully so, I guess we we say rightfully so, is that you know what, financial seas. How how are we going to address it? That's what he's asking people about. So, uh, what do you think? This is going to be discussed for a little while yet. I have no doubt.